prominent Utah Republicans celebrated Friday's U.S. Supreme Court ruling that weakens federal regulators as a win long sought by many conservatives. The court's ruling overturns a 40-year-old precedent known as Chevron deference, which has allowed federal agencies to fill in the gaps left by unclear legislation when it comes to regulating the environment, public health, workplace safety, and consumer protections. Utah Republican Senator Mike Lee, a frequent critic of government bureaucracy, posted a lengthy thread on the social platform X, accusing Congress of having used a lazy technique in lawmaking for much of the past four decades due to the Chevron Doctrine. Rather than enacting real laws, Congress has delegated much of its lawmaking power to unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats, Lee said. In essence, he continued, no one is accountable because the American people can't fire the bureaucrats who make these laws we call rules and regulations. Governor Spencer Cox called the Chevron ruling a mistaken legal doctrine and said its reversal is great news for all of us skeptical of federal authority and focused on individual liberty. Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes called the Chevron decision one of the most dangerous threats to the individual liberties of Americans and said the decision has been weaponized by activist courts and wielded by federal agencies to grow big government and promote partisan interests at the expense of personal freedoms and local control from states. Ding dong the witch's dead courts must exercise their independent judgment in deciding whether an agency has acted within its statutory authority. The case was decided along ideological lines, with Justices Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett and Roberts in the majority and Justices Elena Kagan, Sonia Sotomayor and Ketanji Brown-Jackson in dissent. Utah Representative Burgess Owens said the court has denied regulators the ability to act like legislators. That power now returns to the people's representatives. I am pleased that SCOTUS moved to restore power to the people by reinforcing congressional authority, said Representative John Curtis, Republican Utah. Congress must now step up to legislate effectively. This is particularly significant for Utah, where nearly 70% of our land is federally owned and represents a major victory for those of us who feel many federal agencies are enacting rules beyond the intent of Congress. Representative Celeste Malloy, Republican Utah, said the decision is a win for the American people that rebalances the powers set forth in the Constitution between the legislative and administrative branches of government. But she noted that the decision now puts the ball in Congress's court when it comes to legislating, something the legislative branch of government has done little of lately. It's Congress's job to write legislation that benefits the American people and not leave it to unelected bureaucrats, she posted on X. I hope this ruling will remind members of Congress of our proper role. The court's decision in Loper Bright Enterprises v. Raimondo, which overruled the 40-year-old Chevron v. Natural Resources Defense Council, won't affect Americans' lives in as stark and immediate a way as the 2022 decision overruling Roe v. Wade. But like Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, Loper Bright has the potential to fundamentally transform major aspects of the health, safety, and well-being of most Americans. That's especially true when it is viewed alongside some of the other major cases about agency power the court has handed down in recent terms, and indeed in recent days, that have stripped agencies of power and shifted that power directly to federal courts. Just this week, the court eliminated a key mechanism used by the Securities and Exchange Commission to enforce securities laws and enjoined an important Environmental Protection Agency emissions standard based on, in the words of Justice Amy Coney Barrett in dissent, an underdeveloped theory that is unlikely to succeed on the merits. Out of the 1984 Chevron decision came the doctrine of Chevron deference. In essence, Chevron deference allowed agencies to use their expertise to determine how to carry out laws passed by Congress, laws intended to keep our air and water clean, our drugs safe and effective, and our securities markets protected from fraud and deception. The Supreme Court has now decreed that it, rather than agencies staffed by individuals with deep subject matter expertise and answerable to presidential appointees, will be the final arbiter of the meaning of every statute passed by Congress. What does it mean to require agencies to take the best, or appropriate, or feasible steps to reduce air and water pollution, or to keep workplaces safe? While Chevron directed courts to defer to agencies when they brought their expertise to bear on such questions and produced reasonable answers, the court will now decide for itself.